Hi everybody, welcome to my channel, Life Law Bin. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's wonderful to see you guys again. And um, I am especially pleased because I have Jamal Jeffers here with me. Um, and in true fashion, the name Life Law Bim, we do have another person here of Barbadian heritage, um, Bajan heritage. Um, so I'm especially excited about that today. And he did attend Common Mayor. Um, so he is a, a, a proud, you'd probably hear him say he's a proud call Marian, um, as they would refer to themselves here um, at home. And he, his grandparents as well are, are, are Barbadian. So we do have that shared heritage here. Now, just a bit about, about Jamal, because we definitely will be talking about the fact that he is an equality and, and diversity champion. There's a lot to really talk about today. But just in terms of by way of introduction, he's a family law barrister at KCH Garden Square. And he was recently appointed as a deputy district judge on the Midland Circuit. And this actually has been confirmed by the Judicial Statistics Office that he is the youngest ever black a judicial appointment. So, so that's really fantastic. So he is also the first recipient of the Nottinghamshire Law Society Equality and Diversity Champion Award, uh, the 2022 winner. And he's also the co-founder of BME at the Bar, a Midlands-based group of Black barristers who seek to access the number of Black barristers within the profession. And he obviously has that Jeffers Nunn Award at the University of Leicester, which aims to support individuals from underrepresented groups. So Jamal is a member of the Midlands Circuit Social Mobility Group Committee, and within his chambers is an equality and diversity officer and sits on the board of directors. And certainly last, but uh, by no means least, he's also the pro-chancellor of De Montfort University, what a mouthful, what an introduction, what a dynamic uh, man that we have here today that we have, um, to be, we're actually going to get to benefit uh, from his insight, his comments. And it's a pleasure, Jamal. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. It's um, it, it, it's something humbling, actually, when you read out all those things that I'm doing, I just go, is that me or is that, is that somebody else? It can't, it can't necessarily be me because I, I don't see myself as anything other than just Jamal and Jamal is the same guy he's been for the past, goodness me, 20 odd years and just cracking on and doing the job and, and, and just enjoying life. But, um, yeah, it's good to be here, though. Thank you very much, Adam. Fantastic me. accolades. Um, and before we even get into the substantive matter, you know we always share a, a fun fact, and usually I take the privilege of sharing it. But this time, I think this one is a special one, and I, I, I give way now to Jamal to, to share that fun fact with us. Oh, fun facts are quite difficult, but I think the one that I, I will, will use is this, and it comes along, as you say, with... Um, my Cormarian heritage. I'm a proud Cormarian. We just celebrated Cormarian Week, which um, for all of those who are not from Barbados will uh, will not understand that it is the week that everybody else from Barbados absolutely despise Cormarians because we love uh, speaking about our school and we spend an entire week and sometimes a month just telling everybody how proud we are. Um, uh, Nia's lucky I didn't put on a Cormarian tie this afternoon. But um, I joined the school in 2003 um, in the fourth form, which in the UK would be year 10. Um, and I went to my class for the very first day and in my class sitting down was um, a, a lovely lady who I who we know as Robin Fenty. And the year later, she went on to become the international award-winning, Grammy award-winning and the first billionaire of Barbados, uh, Rihanna. Um, she was a lovely person. I enjoyed getting to know her. Um, I didn't know she had the talent that she currently does. Uh, and so every time that I've ever seen her in the UK, as in trying to go to her concerts, I take up a sign and I say, Robin, it's me from 4B. But she, we've never spoke since those days. And that was only 2004. But um, that's my little fun fact to share with you and your, and your viewers. What a fantastic fun fact. I think that one takes the, the cake, guys. Um, we did we did have one or two. I, I had a guest that could recite pie. 
Um, so there, there, there have been some amazing fun facts, but I think that one takes the pie, uh, especially shouting out Rihanna um, in good fashion from the same Common Mayor Week as well. So, so that's a big one. So let's get into it, Jamal. Um, I'm keen to hear about your journey into the law. So I, I, I give way to you to, to just kind of briefly tell us about your journey into the law, you know, your legal studies, why did you choose the law, etc. Yeah, I, I, th I think it's, um, it, 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 I followed a very linear path into the law, right? So I went to, um, I finished sixth form. I didn't do law at sixth form. I finished sixth form at Commonwealth and decided to, to come back to the UK to do my law degree. Um, and one of the reasons why I decided to come back to the UK was because I didn't think I'd be accepted into um, the University of the West Indies. Um, when I was, this was back in 2007. So when I was applying, there were rumours abounding that on campus at Cave Hill, they only took something in the region of 10 Bajan students every year to study law. And my academics were nowhere near strong enough to be one in 10. I don't know if one in 10 was an actual fact, but that's what was told to me. And so I said, I'm not even going to attempt to do that. And I had the opportunity to come to the UK. Um, so I, I dove headfirst into it and came back to the UK to study. Um, I, I chose law because I kind of fell into it. Um, no one in my family are lawyers, um, but I knew that I was quite an argumentative young boy. My mum would always say, you'll make a good lawyer one day. So off I went to study law. Um, and, and the path seemed pretty clear to me. Um, and I just, as soon as I got to uni, just enjoyed uh, reading through um, cases, reading through statute and, and, and getting into the, the nitty gritty of it. Um, and, and so that's really the way that it took me to start to study law. And since then, everything has been relatively smooth. Um, but you'll hear at some point about some of the, some of the obstacles that I faced. Yeah, we're definitely keen to hear about those obstacles because, you know, I, I find throughout my journey of life, you, you really do take your lessons, a lot of your lessons from those difficulties, from those hurdles. So if you found that you had any, any difficulties or challenges uh, that you encountered while pursuing uh, the, your career at the bar, we'd be keen to hear about it and how you obviously uh, overcame those. Well, I suppose, as you know, here we've got a, a split profession, right? So we have the bar and, and solicitors. I, I knew from about second week of my first year at university I wanted to do the bar um it was sold to me as um the thing you do because you're the one that's standing up and you're the one that's presenting um I, I knew full well that I like the sound of my own voice I like to be argumentative I like sometimes to be in the spotlight so it made sense to me uh to pursue a career at the bar and I didn't have notions partly because it was naivety I didn't have notions that it would be any harder than, than trying to um, become a solicitor. So I, you know, blinkers on and went straight forward. Um, but I'll make it quite clear, pursuing a career at the bar is by no means an easy feat. Um, the numbers in, in terms of students who uh, do a law degree or GDL, who then go on to, to bar school, um, and then go on to get a pupillage. Those numbers are relatively um, scary reading. And I'm not going to uh, bore your viewers with them, but know for a fact that, you know, it is very slim pickings, and that's the reality of it. And there's no point in us sugarcoating that or saying that it isn't. Um, and so that's an obstacle that that I face and everybody else who, who comes to the bar faces. Um, but I think one of the things is... Um, One of the major difficulties is finances. If you don't have a lot of finances behind you, it may seem incredibly daunting. Going to bar school is expensive. Um, in my day, it was something in the region of £13,000. I think it may be more now. Um, I was fortunate enough to be able to take out a commercial loan because I couldn't get a scholarship. I didn't have um, the academics to get a scholarship or indeed um I, I didn't make it through scholarship interview um so i was fortunate enough to be able to take an academic loan which took me a decade to pay off that's not you know you don't go into these things with with um 
with your eyes shut because that's that's a massive millstone around your neck. Um, I left bar school with um, uh, a competent, which is the lowest grade you could get, and there are reasons why why that happened, and part, mostly my own fault <laughs> because I tried to do uh, too much at, um, at one time. Uh, I couldn't find any paid legal work once I left bar school. I didn't have a pupilage lined up straight away. Um, so I volunteered at a legal advice centre for six months, nine to five. And from six until two, I went and worked at a bar um, in order to pay the rent, in order to to, to put some, some food on the table. Um, I, I, that's quite tricky. And that's, that's a very difficult thing to do. Um, and I did that until I was able to get a full-time position at the Legal Advice Centre. At some, when I was at university, and these are all some of the obstacles I faced, when I was at university and I was on a mini pupillage, I, I remember a barrister saying to me, well, Jamal, you might want to think about changing your, your first name because it might be off-putting um, to people who are marking your application. <sighs> Uh, that, that that was a blow, you know. I'm I'm 19 at the time, and someone says that to me. I I, I disregarded it, of course. Um, but I can't say that it didn't subconsciously stick with me, and that's quite a tricky thing to hear. Um, the idea of not being good enough or desirable enough to make it in the profession that I had already decided at that point was going to be, um, my life. Um. Uh, one of the other issues I think a lot of people don't talk about, but is important to talk about, is resilience. Um, if you leave bar school and you see that your friends are getting pupillage and you're not getting there and you're striving and trying to get there, um, every year or every rejection you get, you get a knock and it hits you. Um, and there are periods where, I know for me, I felt really quite low. And the reality is it took me four years post basketball in order to get a pupillage. Um, you feel low, you feel as if uh, the path that you put yourself on is not the right path for you. Um, but the only way to, to get there is to continue. So whilst uh, you've got to find a way, some kind of coping mechanism to dust yourself off and keep going, and take the feedback that people are giving you and apply that um, to make sure that you can um, uh, make it in the end. And the only way, the only people that will get people are the people that are still in the race. Um, so there, I think, a snapshot of, of some of the difficulties and the, the obstacles that were, I thought I encountered on, on my way to the bar. Oh, wow, you, you've just hit um, on some, some really salient points that I think... <laughs> a lot of us continue to to to, to face so yeah. the first one is, is is obviously that financial hurdle her hurdle sorry and 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 the situation is everyone can't get a scholarship um that's that's just the reality of the situation everyone can't get a scholarship so it's it's always a situation where some people are trying to obviously work and study um some people literally think they can't um they can't literally fund the bar course with a commercial loan either because they, they may already be in debt. So it's interesting that you've, you've touched on that point. And then you've also um, touched on, on, on the point of grades. A lot of that is generally overlooked, especially when you attend a lot of the web webinars. There is almost like a, an implied message that if you don't have a very competent, if you don't have a merit, um, in your in your masters, or if you don't have at least a two one, that is the end of the road for you. Just exit stage left. There's no career at the bar for you, and I think it's almost evident that intellectual aptitude surpasses these examinations. Yes, they are critical, but life happens. Sadly. Yeah life happens we we have to deal with the roller coaster of of the emotions of, of life and things that occur and and these things that wax and wane heavily on on our ability to cope with some of our examinations and that's just an additional pressure i find and i, I i'm so happy that you spoke so candidly about grades because that's something that 
people just readily see it as, oh dear, well, I, I didn't make the standard that, that um, you know, pupillage applications would be looking for. Do I continue? Because there's always this, this, this myth and then there's some chambers that actually do do it. Some people would tell you don't bother to apply, it's going into the bin. Um, you, 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 or you will have to have some really, really, really mitigating factor that makes you stand out. So it's almost like a, a, a another another hurdle. So I'm really glad you spoke so candidly about the grades. And then ultimately, <laughs> the name, oh my goodness, so many ethnic minority, uh, ethnic minority persons face this. Um, if you don't have that stereotypical or typical name, um, you already know that you may already be facing some type of disadvantage because I always tell people our names are part of our identity and who we are. Sometimes you get a snapshot of who you think may be coming because of a name. So it, it, that's, that's, that's a powerful one. I'm glad that you highlighted those difficulties because the sad reality is that, you know, many of us are still facing that um, today. And it's, I'm, I'm still glad that at the end of your message, it's always, you know, keep applying hold on you have to stay in the race in order to get it i remember yeah. i was on a um a marshalling I, I was marshalling a judge and he said look the simple thing is you need to keep knocking on that knocking on that door knock on the same spot he said have you ever noticed if you knock on the same spot in a wall after a while it has to give in <laughs> i thought to myself <laughs> i thought to myself you know what, I'll, I'll keep that to the back of my mind. Um, he said, it just makes sense. You keep yeah. knocking on that wall, keep knocking on it, keep knocking on it, don't give up. After a while, it, it has to, to give in. But at the same time, I'm saying that while knowing the reality of some person's situation and, and your financial situation might not allow you to keep knocking, you may have to very well uh, either take a longer route or seek an alternative path. But I'm so grateful um, that you have so... Uh, eloquently explain those difficulties and 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 you know how you can possibly overcome them now we know as well that you you are a family law barrister so do you have any advice at all for those who are keen on on practicing in family law family law is um you've got to enjoy family law and the work that i do is it is solely children work so i i only deal with um child protection matters or where um, children um, are between parents who can't decide um, how they spend their time um, with, with the children. So that's that's the work I do entirely. And um, there are other aspects such as um, financial remedies. I don't do those because I'm not really good with numbers. So that's why I don't do that kind of work. And that's, that's the reality behind that. Um, but a lot of people do, um, do good at it. Um, but with family work and with children work in particular, I think you have to enjoy it because, um, again, I'm going to be incredibly real here. The work that we do is demanding emotionally, intellectually, um, and, and sometimes physically, actually. Uh, and you've got to be able to get through um, those days where you are reading things that are that are really, really quite serious. And um, I, I've recently started doing well, I've recently started doing a lot more um, sexual abuse cases and they take some getting used to. Um, they take a, a massive toll out of us. And I know a lot of people um, marvel about how we don't have in-house um, therapists and things like that, because we don't, I mean, you know, as, as a self-employed bar, it's us and off we go and, and present the case. Um, but... I, I think if if you're coming to do family law, um, know that we're not the um, we're not the we're not the lawyers of choice who will spend all day reading um, statute books and not or reading practitioners' texts. We like facts. We deal with the facts of the case. We deal with um, the realities of life, and um, you've got to be able to work with people. Um, who come from all kinds of walks of life, um, who are very different to you, um, or who may be very similar to you. And it, it, you've got to be able to want 
um, want to be their voice um, and want really to do what's right. My only advice is if you're keen on it, try and get some experience. And it's really it's really difficult because it's not like crime. You can't just walk into a Crown Court. Um, uh, uh, well, with crime, you can walk into a Crown Court and you can watch and you can see what's going on. Um, our courts are private, which means we don't have anybody from the outside. So it's it's quite hard sometimes to be able to um, to just see what's happening. But if you can find some way of getting some experience in it, um, it will open your eyes a little bit more to what we do. Um, but if you're keen on it, keep going. Uh, there's a lot of work out there, um, sadly, but there is, there's a lot of work out there. Insightful advice indeed. And, and given that we are on this um, whole notion of advice, we did speak very, very briefly about how difficult it is to obtain a pupillage. But what advice would you uh, share with those applying for pupillage, especially those uh, from an ethnic mi uh, minority background? I've got a couple of top tips, I think, for, for, for pupillage applications. And this, this goes across the board, and some of them will, will be, um, you will understand if they are more um, directed to you. But the reality is, be realistic. Know the set that you're looking for. Know the set that you want to target and target those sets that you think you will get a good chance of, of getting a pupil jack. Um, if you're going through the gateway, I know that gateway limit the amount of applications you make. If you want to be um, a job in criminal barrister or a job in family barrister, don't apply to a set that does planning because they, they don't want you, you don't want them, you know? So don't waste an application in that way. Focus, be very focused. Um, uh, uh, and that ties in with doing your research. Research the sets that you want to apply for. Um, for me, there's nothing worse than reading an application to my set of chambers, and it says, I want to be a commercial shipping lawyer. Great. We don't do commercial shipping law at our, our set of chambers, so I'm not going to offer you a pupillage because you haven't read what we do. Uh, and I understand, because I was there, we were all there, the desperation and the want and the need to get this privilege because um once you once you get past bar school that is your goal right your goal is to get a privilege but you can only get a privilege in, in in one place so you can only get a privilege uh, in a place that is right for you um sets often these days have their marking criteria and indeed their scorecards on their on their websites find them if you think that in one bracket you're going to be scored more lowly, find something else in the other brackets to bring your bring your points up. Um, again, at my set, we we are very transparent. Everything that we do is on our website, so we score from one to five in certain different areas, and it's there. So if it's advocacy that you don't have, go and do some advocacy. Go and get some experience somewhere. And if you can't, bring your points up somewhere else. Um, because that's the only way it's going to help you because you've got to get through and you've got to know that you're up against 400, 500 other people going for that one position. It's a lot of people. So stand yourself out. But standing yourself out doesn't mean that you do the same things that everyone else does. I'm much more interested, actually, if you've done something slightly different, but you have transferable skills. So if you... If I read another application, someone's going to climb Mount Kilimanjaro, I'm going to scream. I think I'm not bothered about that anymore. But find me something that's real. Find me something that, that that is tangible, but that is accessing the bar. And, you know, our job, and we've spoken about it a little bit, my job is to try and make the bar more real, right, and and, and part of everyday people. So if you, if you give me something that's everyday, then I might understand that, and I might know it. This next tip is a little less useful these days, but I think still important, and it's being known. If you can be known, as in you know certain members of chambers, certain members of um, the local bar, whilst it won't necessarily give you a leg up in terms of your applications, because applications these days are mostly marked blind, um, and, and we have real strict criteria about how we make those applications, you will know how those people tick. So you will know 
what they will likely want to see on an application. And, and smaller sets of chambers and sets of chambers outside of London and some of the bigger cities are often, are often smaller, have less, and less members and often feel a bit more collegiate, feel a bit more like a family. It's handy to know those people because we as the, as the barristers in that chambers have to put our hands in our pocket in order to pay for you to come for a few and we're going to want to be able to invest in you as a person. And so if you know those people and those people go, oh, I like that person. They tick all the boxes that we want them to tick. We think they're going to be a good barrister. Is that going to give you the edge over somebody else? It might do. Because ultimately, the barristers that are marking your applications are human beings. So we're all fallible as well. Um, particularly, I suppose, in terms of people from different minority ethnic backgrounds, try not to let you being the only person of your ethnicity in a set put you off applying. Currently, I'm the only black member of my set, which is an awful place for me to be. And I feel really ashamed about that, actually, as a member of my set. Um, it hasn't always been the case. And we had somebody who, who left our set recently because they, were, they needed to go somewhere else. And that's fine. But that set may still very well be the, set, the, the right place for you. That set of people may very well be looking for you. So don't let it put you off. Um, and ultimately, my job is somebody who's been doing the job for a while, is to make sure that you're not the standard bearer for your entire race, because that's not your job. Your job is just to be a barrister. Um, and so it's my job to try and make sure that we don't have this conversation in 10 years' time, that everybody that's coming into the bar is coming into the bar just to be a barrister. And the reality is, and let's be real about it, um, I personally feel, and I can't evidence it, but I personally feel that it was a harder road for me to follow than some of my white colleagues and white friends. Okay. But it doesn't mean that I'm not doing my job great and good now. Um, so just keep pushing. And it ties on with my resilience point. If you're applying for pupillage, please be resilient. Brilliant advice indeed.